Grace and peace to you. This is yours truly, Bishop Bowser, coming at you once again. You know, I'm really starting to realize, and I'm not accepting, but I'm starting to realize that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And what I mean by that is, is when you look at the uh, street life, right, of those that are either, have either been institutionalized by the prison culture or institutionalized by the gang culture. And especially, you know, when you when those two are meshed together, right? And you have a lot of the uh, prison rules and, and codes and ethics um, and principles in the streets governing the gangs, right? And one of the things that I found is that we got a lot of guys that are my age, you know, and younger, maybe in their 50s. I'm 61. Uh, I've got guys in their 60s, younger than me and older than me, still claiming to be a gang member. You know, I'm formerly West Coast Crip, uh, rolling 20s, you know, and what I look like up here, you know, um, throwing up the WC, talking about West Side and rolling 20s, Crip for life. Right. Um, that, you know, is for the immature mind, for the younger folks. But it really blows me away when I see older people with grades like this and still talking that gang stuff. Right. Being a gang member, following the gang rules. I saw one guy on um, YouTube talking about DPing somebody and, and other folks getting DPed and so on. And in your 60s. And in 50, I'm like, Lord, have mercy. In 40s, like, you know, are you still uh, captured and, and imprisoned to, to the gang culture to where that you can't have your own autonomy, your own independence, your own ability to think for yourself and to do as you please as um, a man, right? Uh, so that means that, you know, you're, you're still a part of a, a gang culture that has not produced anything positive for you, right? Um, prison lifestyle, being shot, losing a lot of people to this. And so this is really no joke when you talk about gangs and, and the destructiveness of what is done in our community, in our communities, um, in our families and to individuals, right? And so when I say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, you know, because one of the things I try to do is reach people and help people to um, think about the life that they live in, especially when it comes to that gang culture, because I used to be a part of that and try to get people to change and to move away from that. And they just not going to change. It seems like the more you speak about it, talk about it, try to educate them on it, the more they dig in. Right. And they'll tell you straight up they in this for life. Talk about a gang member. And of course, they try to make a distinction between being a gang member and a gang banger, uh, which for me, you know, if you're if you're a gang member, you're still a part of that culture. You're still a part of that lifestyle. And just like with the mafia, if you're still a mafia member, whether you shot, killed anybody, when they start indicting people, they're going to indict you, too. You're going to get caught up in that lifestyle. But I want to address the mindset, right, because when you look at individuals being caught up in this gang culture and this gang lifestyle, that means that they have been institutionalized, right? Um, it has been ingrained, embedded in them to where that they're loyal only to the streets, loyal to only that gang, right? Um, their children have suffered, their spouses have suffered, their uh, mothers and fathers and families have suffered from them being a part of this culture and they still can't see how destructive it is. It limits you in your ability, right, to excel in the professional arena, in the business world. You know, who's going to want to do business with a gang member, right? Someone walking around with a blue rag in their pocket or in their hand or red rag in their pocket or burgundy for pyro in, in your hand or your pocket and so on. Talking about, you know, this is blood, pyro, damu, crib or whatever, you know. Um, we're getting too old for this stuff, right? Um, you know, I can understand the, youngs the youngsters, those are the ones that, you know, I'm really trying to reach because they're still moldable and still willing to listen and willing to change. I hear a lot of old heads saying, oh man, these young people ain't listening. They're not listening to you because you still uh, claim to be a gang member. 
you're still out there, right? Why should they listen to you? They, they, but they will listen to someone that represents change. They will listen to someone who's been where they are and has made a transition to a better life, right? And so, you know, don't get me wrong. I got a lot of friends that I used to gang bang with and put in work with. And now they are uh, no longer, they, they'll tell you they're not a gang member. They're not a part of that culture, part of that lifestyle. They live in their own life and doing their own thing. Many of them done years and years in prison. Some of them got out 20, 10 years ago. And many of them, they live in their life and they're doing the thing, right? But they ain't talking about being a gang member. They ain't talking about being a West Coast Crip, rolling 20s or rolling 30s for life and all of that kind of stuff. That stuff is for, for kids and, and, and for the immature and for those who don't know no better. But when we get a certain age, you know, you get around 26, 27, your mind is uh, supposed to, you're supposed to start thinking about real, real change, right? You get in your 30s, transition is hard. And I've been a part of that gang culture and I know it's hard uh, to leave and to get out of that type of um, lifestyle when you're trapped in it. That's why it took God to pull me out of that lifestyle. So I know like in your 20s and 30s, you know, you still might be struggling with, even if you want to leave, it's hard to do it. But when you get in your 40s, your 50s, 60s, and even some guys in their 70s still claiming they set and throwing up their gang signs and all that, that is like so immature and childish. And we need to grow up. You know, um, uh, there are four things that can help an individual change, right? Um, there's four foundational theories I use. One is credible authority. You got to start listening, other than listening to uh, the prison culture, the street culture, the gang culture, you need to start opening yourself up to other things. Get some therapy, get some counseling, uh, come to programs like us where we help you change your mindset and, and your beliefs and your values and get a hold of your emotions and so that you can change your behaviors and get better outcomes, right? Um, social environment. You're not going to never change you in the same environment, right? So you got to get in a different environment if you really want to see change. Also, you got a, a repetition information. If whatever you dream or hope to be other than a gang member, you keep telling yourself, I'm a gang member, I'm a gang member, I'm a gang member. Then that's what you're going to continue to be. And you're not going to go nowhere in life. And basically, you're just going to be a loser. I'm sorry to tell you that. Um, but if you tell yourself and start speaking to yourself positive things, right? Gang members are a negative thing. Speak some positive things to yourself repetitiously. Speak it in the morning, speak it in the evening. And then also <clears throat> your personal experiences. So far, all your personal experiences told you is that the gang lifestyle is the life to live. You're loyal to it, you're dedicated to it. It's ingrained into you and nothing can change you, right? That's the way you look at it. But when you start experimenting and looking at a new life, a new way to live, a new way of thinking, you start realizing there's more to life than just being a gang member, right? And 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 that is that is for sure. And that's one of the things we got to really start looking at and um, dealing with, right? So you got your uh, you got your credible authority, you got your uh, personal experiences, you got your uh, repetitious information, uh, the things that um, where where you constantly tell yourself things over and over and over and over and over again until it becomes get it deep down in your belief system and in your values but you have to change your belief system if you really want to change and you really want things to move in the right way for you and so on so i'm not going to keep going on in in the video and talking here about this but i just wanted to quickly share that the old saying says you can't teach an old dog new tricks because they're stuck in their ways as long as you continue to buy into this gang culture and, and allow yourself to be institutionalized, you're going to continue to go that way. The only way you're going to change, you got to start thinking change, right? And then you can change and so on. So uh, let us let us start working on changing our belief system with those four foundational theories. God bless you.